Hey, in this video I'm going to break down the difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance. Put it in very simple, simple terms, easy to understand, and I'll tell you a few ways that these products are marketed and other phrases and words that are used can, that can kind of be a little bit uh, confusing to the consumer and even agents when they're new to the industry. They think that maybe a, a particular phrase is a, an actual product when it is not. So I'm going to break this down, term versus whole life. My name is Kyle Studer. I run an independent brokerage and insurance agency. We focus in the senior market predominantly now. Early in my career, I sold a lot of term insurance, so I'm well-versed in both. If you're an agent looking for a good agency to partner with, go to kylestuder.com, scroll to the bottom, and uh, you can fill out the contact card and someone will reach out to you. We'd love to talk with you. Also on Instagram, at kylestuderfe. <clears throat> that being said, let's get into this. So we'll start with the term life insurance. Um, let me mention Dave Ramsey. You know, a lot of people follow Dave Ramsey. I have a lot of respect for Dave Ramsey and the business that he's built. I think it's important that consumers uh, take that into account that Mr. Ramsey himself is a business owner. He is not uh, an employee or, you know, part of that group that he oftentimes counsels. So he says something like, buy term and invest the rest. Whole life insurance is very expensive, he says, and that if you buy term, you know, you're saving a lot of the premium dollars with the money you're saving, you can invest that, and over the long run, you'll be better off buying term and investing the rest. Here's what I found to be the case, and listen, I think that is a tremendous strategy. There's a few things that you've gotta be aware of though. Number one, term is harder, harder to qualify for. So when I sit down, even with a, an easier term application, which is called simplified issue, that means there's no blood, there's no urine, no, no medical analysis. Just I ask you some questions, we bubble in yes, no to some health questions, we submit it. Oftentimes, we can get that approved instantly right on the computer while I'm at your house. Um, that's called simplified issue. Even that they want to know your health the last 10 years. Have you had heart attack, stroke, cancer? Uh, they look into, they ask about diabetes, blood pressure, depression, anxiety. They ask about a lot of stuff and they're looking back 10 years. Okay, so in my line of work, once we get into the, the senior market, you know, 50 years old plus, while there are many healthy 50, 60, 70 year olds, the older you get, Gen, I'm generalizing, the more health concerns you have. You, you might have a stroke. You might have uh, minor health. You might have major health concerns. Those folks, they're not going to get approved for a term more often than not. So they're kind of forced into looking for some whole life coverage that the, the look back on health, it's not 10 years. It's more like two. And then if you're really bad health, there are companies, whole life companies, that you can get guaranteed issue. I'm talking about AIDS, uh, I'm talking about hooked to an oxygen machine, um, you know, you can't, you can't go anywhere without an oxygen machine, dementia, Alzheimer's, all kinds of more severe diagnosis, we can get those people covered anytime, no problem, 50 to 85, 0 to 85, we can cover them, guaranteed issue, that's always an option. So with term, to stay on track here, it's harder to qualify for it. So that automatically rules out a lot of clients. The other thing is with term, this buy term and invest the rest. People are habit driven. We're, we're driven by our behaviors. We all have savings habits. We all have eating habits. We all have, we're all predisposed to different emotional patterns. Some people feel depressed. Some people get angry. We're all, we all are individuals. And the point of me saying that is many, 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 many people will buy a term policy, save the money, but then they do not methodically and habitually invest the difference for the long term over time. There are more short term thinkers than there are long term thinkers. Now I will say, if you're a long term thinker, if you're somebody who has exhibited discipline in their life, then you probably, and if you qualify, then you should probably buy term and invest the rest. If you're a long-term thinker with discipline, it's probably the, the better route. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy term and I'm going to invest the rest. 
but not everybody fits that mold. So sometimes I find couples are better off buying a term policy with a return of premium rider where they actually pay more for the term insurance. Say that it's a simple term policy and they bought a term policy to cover their house or to cover the expenses of a college education if they were to die this money is to pay for their children's college. Let's say $250,000, quarter of a million. You have that money. You have that term policy for 15, 20, 30 years. A return of premium plan is like if you die, your spouse or your beneficiary gets the $250,000 tax free. So in that case, you died earlier than expected, earlier than statistics would say, and that money goes to your beneficiary. They keep it, they pocket that, and they can use that money for anything they want. They can pay for the education, they could pay off the mortgage, they could live off of that, they could invest it. It's their money, free and clear. The other option with return of premium is, say you don't die, which by the way, is the more likely outcome. 3% will say only, only 3% of term policies actually pay out a death benefit. And it's not because insurance companies are ripping people off and that they're sneaking off with the, with the death claims. That's not it at all. The actuaries who design the products, they know how many people are going to die. So if they sign up a thousand people between this age band, they know how many are going to pass. And 97% of the time, when you're approved for a term policy, you don't die by the end of the term. 97%. So we're not God. We don't know when our time is, right? We don't. But we can look at those statistics. We can factor in how long your mom and dad lived. We can get an idea if term is a better investment or whole life. So with the return of premium to finish up, let's say you pay this for 20, 30 years, you get all of your money back at the end. Now, it doesn't build any interest. So if, if you're sophisticated, if you're disciplined, if you're knowledgeable in regards to investing, if you know about low-cost index funds and you can play the long game, then buy term and invest the rest. But if you, be honest with yourself. Be honest. A lot of people that I encounter won't invest the money. Okay? So they're better off paying more for a term policy and it's like a forced savings account. So let's say you can get 250000 plain old term for 50 bucks a month or say 30 bucks a month. Okay, great. Now, instead of 30 bucks a month, let's say you could pay $60 a month, but at the end of the term, you get all your money back. So $60 times 12 months times 15 or 20 or 30 years, however long you just, you the term is, at the end of it, you get all your money back. Oftentimes, you have the option of taking that money. You get it tax-free. Or you can roll it into a whole life plan, like a single premium plan, and you set it and forget it. And you'll never have to worry about your final expenses ever again. You'll never have to worry about how am I going to be buried or cremated or how, well, how are my final wishes going to be executed because you covered yourself with a return of premium term for the long haul while you were having a mortgage, younger children, in debt, etc. And then at the end, you just they say, hey, here's your $23,000 that you paid in over the time. For the $250,000, here's your $16,000 you've paid in, whatever the number equates to. You can take this money and we can give it back to you. Or if we take this $16,000, we can give it to you. Or we can take it and apply it to a, to a whole life plan. And this will get you a $25,000 policy that you never have to pay on. It's paid up day one. So that's kind of a, a brief summary of term. A few more things I want to touch on with term. This is easy. This is easy to understand. Term is short for terminates. That's it. So it's meant to cover you for a term or a period of time. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And they do have some terms that go up to 40 years. But it's just a term of time. Okay? So it terminates. Whole life, it lasts your whole life. Simply said, that's easy to remember. Your price generally on whole life, all the products that we sell, whole life, your price never goes up. Your benefit never goes down. There's no hoops, loops, swoops. There's no tricks. It's just plain Jane whole life insurance. 
It will build some cash value. It's nothing to call home about. It's nothing to get excited about. You're not going to get rich on your cash value on a whole life policy. But it's there. And for the majority of Americans, there's a vast majority that live near, below, or just above the poverty line. Okay? So they're not necessarily looking for sophisticated investments. They just want to know that their loved ones are going to be taken care of. They're not going to have to dump their funeral costs on their son or their daughter or their granddaughter or their sister or their brother or their husband or their wife. They just want the basics taken care of. Okay? So let me tell you a few ways that term is oftentimes marketed. So you can sell term as an agent. You can sell term life insurance um, as income replacement. For example, we sit down, husband, wife. Let's say the wife is the breadwinner. She makes $200,000 a year. Husband stays home with the kids, right? Let's say, all right, she, over the course of 10 years, she's going to make quite a bit of money, right? Over the course of 10 years, she's going to make $2 million gross, $200,000 a year times 10. So for financial security, we could say, well, if Heather, who's earning $200,000 a year, died right now, and we look at the house that they're in, 500, 600, maybe a million dollar house, who knows? We'd have to take that case by case and we do a financial assessment to know what their mortgage is going to be, what do they have in savings, what other life insurance do they have, how's their health. Based on this information, we'll make a recommendation. But so income replacement is one way to sell term. So in this example, Heather dies, 10 years worth of income replacement would be $2 million. Perhaps you have a million dollar mortgage, you say $2 million, one million goes to the mortgage, takes off your bit takes your biggest debt away. The other million goes to college savings and income replacement for a few years. Okay? So there's a lot of ways you can get creative with income replacement. As an agent, it's just important to present something that's easily understood and can be broken down simplistically. And I I often they'll get a policy in the mail, of course, but that doesn't really explain the intentions behind the policy. That's just the coverage amount they have, the beneficiaries, the technicalities. So I like to leave a handwritten receipt explaining why we put this in place. The more common thing that you'll see, other than income replacement, would be mortgage protection. So let's talk about this for a moment. When you buy a home, refinance your home, when there is a loan modification, okay, that is public information at the courthouse. There are companies that create leads or find people who may be interested in purchasing life insurance. They pull that data and they mail to you. And it says, for example, congratulations on your new purchase for your mortgage through Chase Bank for $250,000. Sometimes the lender will be private. Sometimes the amount will be private. You won't know those. But oftentimes your, your bank, the lender, the lender and the mortgage amount is right. It's public. They know your name, your mortgage amount, and the lender. So it'll have all that on there. And a lot of consumers can get confused and think that it's actually from the bank. What banks don't do this anymore. They used to do something called Credit Life, where they would do internally, where you could go in and pick up like a life insurance plan, or you could, it would basically pay your house off if you died by accident. Now, what we're seeing now from third parties like myself, we'll market to consumers like this, and it'll say, Mortgage protection. If you were to die during the time of your loan, this plan pays off the full mortgage amount. If you were to become disabled, your insurance premiums to cover the mortgage are waived. You don't have to pay your, month, your in monthly insurance premium if you lose your job or if you were to become disabled. And finally, if you don't die at the end of the mortgage term, you have the option to opt into what I mentioned earlier, return a premium. So think about this from a sales perspective. Hey, Mary, if you die, the house is paid off. If you get hurt, lose your job, you don't have to pay for the insurance each month. And if you don't die, Mary, which by the way, that's the most likely outcome. If you don't die, you get all of your money back. How is this possible? Well, the insurance company is investing your money and I can explain to them. Like, So talk about a product that really sounds enticing. If you die, it pays. You get hurt, it pays. You lose your job, it pays. You don't die. 
None of this stuff happens. You don't die. You get all your money back. So it's a long game. A mortgage is 15, 20, 30 years. You've got to pay the premium. If you're going to quit in a year, quit in three years, that's not a good product for you. But long term, it's a very good product. It's a very good idea, especially if you're not going to be someone that's diligent about investing their money. So <clears throat> those, there's also more intricate ways to do mortgage protection. You can cover half the mortgage for clients who are older uh, and may not even cover uh, qualify for a term. There's ways to use whole life protection and, and kind of fill that gap and we can sell a whole life plan by changing some, some concepts around. We can use a whole life plan to still satisfy that need. And, and instead of paying off the whole mortgage, we generally would pay off uh, the mortgage payments for an extended period of time. And oftentimes I find that that's the best solution for the older clients. Is I will sit with folks, 50s, 60s, even 70s, who buy a new home or they refinance their home. And now they have this debt, and they want to make sure that they're covered. And so we'll say, hey, John, if you were to pass, Mary's going to get a tax-free check. It's enough money to pay the mortgage for 36 months. It's going to pay the mortgage for three years. This gives your wife, Mary, time to process, time to grieve, time to focus on the loss emotionally, not have to worry about things financially. And ultimately, a lot of the spouses say that they wouldn't live in the house, that if their husband or wife died, they would want to sell the house. They would want to downsize and simplify. So when that's the case, and it oftentimes is, you don't need to pay more to cover the entire mortgage. You just need a little bit of money to work like a bridge, to pay the mortgage for an extended number of months to, to give your spouse the time to, to sell the home or to figure out their next step. And so they don't, and so they have a little bit of leverage. They're not desperate. They don't have to sell the house in three months. They can wait for the right offer. You know, say the market's down at that time. I know recently the market's been up and up and up, but the market does come down. And so if it's a bad time for the market, she doesn't have to have a fire sale and just, you know, load off everything valuable that she owns. She has some options. So that's term, okay? We broke down a little bit of term. Whole life, I'll get into the most common thing that I see with whole life, and this is kind of what we do a lot of. Um, final expense. Some people call it burial or cremation. Uh, you know, if you're being crem cremated today, you know, my, mo my mother passed um, a little over a year ago, and, well, no, almost a year to the date. It hasn't been quite over a year. My mother passed, and... I was responsible for calling funeral homes. So I was calling funeral homes in uh, Columbus, Ohio. She wanted to be cremated. And the prices ranged, you know, last year, 2021, anywhere from like $1,500 for just a basic, basic, basic cremation up to like four and 5,000 for the same service. This isn't, oh, well, this is what the showing and this is what, it was just the cremation. That's it. Cremation cardboard box from fifteen hundred to five thousand, quite a range. Okay, so if you're going to be cremated, we always recommend at least five thousand um, dollars to get that done. The reason is is that say you're fifty, sixty, or seventy years old today, the average female lives to be eighty-one to eighty-four. The average male lives to be seventy-nine to eighty-one. The question is, okay, well today you're sixty-two. But what is cremation going to cost when you're 80? Hey, are your mom and dad still with us? Okay, how old were they when they passed? Oh, 87 and 85. So that's a that's a predictor that we'll talk about to kind of help the client make an educated decision. We say, hey, here's the average, 81 to 84. Your mom and dad lived to be 85 and 87. They were above average. You're 62. You're in good health. Right? So we're projecting. We don't know when we're going to pass, but... We factor things in and try to help the client make an educated decision. So whole life insurance is a lot easier to qualify for. Look back to two years. That means if you had cancer two and a half years ago, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. We can get you covered day one. So we sign up. We do a policy right on my computer, the one I'm talking to you on. 
at the end of it, about 20 minutes to fill out an application, boom, it says approved. Congratulations, your client is medically eligible to apply for the product uh, applied for. Approved. Gives you a policy number. Your first payment doesn't come out until next month when your social security hits or the next time your social security is going to hit. For example, if I'm sitting with you on the first of the month and you get your social security check on the second, third, or fourth Wednesday, then your first premium would come out in a few weeks on that second, third, or fourth Wednesday. So easier to qualify for, build some cash value, and here's the thing. People buy life insurance for different reasons, right? If you're buying it to cover a mortgage debt, well then, yeah, sure, you don't need it to be permanent because the mortgage isn't going to be permanent, hopefully. Um, buying it for income replacement, sure, you don't need it forever because you're not going to work forever. So when you retire, you don't need to pay for that premium to, to replace all that income because your income generally goes down when you retire. <clears throat> But the only kind of, this is what I tell clients a lot, especially in the senior market, the only kind of life insurance that matters is the kind that's there when you die. And so this is the argument for term versus whole. I believe in term. I don't think that you can exclude completely one of the options because I know there are certain demographics that will not, that don't even have term as an option. So what do we do for those folks? Or the folks that they, they can't qualify, or they just don't need that, or they don't want to pay for something that's 97% likely to not pay back. So they're both good options depending on what you're going to use them for. To generalize, term is good for when you're young, you have, you're younger, you have young children, you have more debts, theoretically. You have a mortgage. You have car payments. You have yet to put the kids through college. You have more expenses, uh, letterman jackets, first vehicles, sports, etc. So that time of your life is more expensive, right? Because the kids are young. Like We just had our third kid uh, literally uh, 10 days ago. So we're on number three. We've got a four-year-old, 18-month-old, uh, and now a 10-day-old. And I think four is our max. We'll see where we end up. But that's going to be the most expensive time of our lives. It's not when I'm 60 and it's my wife and I in our home and our home's paid off and our kids are out of the house. We don't need the, the $1 million, $2 million, $10 million term policy at that time. So generalizing term can be good for those younger couples and covering the most expensive times of their life. If, if one of them were to die, like there's more financial support that's needed at that time, generally. Whole life is oftentimes marketed for final expense, burial, cremation, as I said. You can use it for mortgage payment protection uh, or covering the mortgage. I've done that many, many times. So the big thing with whole life, too, guys, is it, it as I said earlier, it lasts your whole life. You're covered to age 120, generally. Price never goes up. Benefit never goes down. You choose your beneficiary. Both kinds of life insurance, they both pay out tax-free. And oftentimes nowadays they have also what's called living benefits. So one of the knocks on life insurance years ago was, yeah, life insurance is great, man, but you got to die to get it. And now they have living benefits. So where if you were to become critically, chronically, or terminally ill, you can actually access some of your death benefit while you're alive. So for example, let's say a client buys a $25,000 whole life policy uh, on herself, wants to leave the money to her son to pay for the funeral, and then maybe leave a little bit of money behind to her son. <clears throat> let's say she has a stroke. Now, it's case by case, but what you can do is you report that claim to the insurance company, like, hey, I had a stroke. And there's a cap. There's a maximum amount of money. Generally, you can get up to 75% of that $25,000 death benefit while you are alive. So this is powerful. This has really changed the game. It's So if you're somebody that's buying like heart attack, stroke, cancer policies, 
they're good policies. It's, it's always good to have protection. You know, it's always a good thing to have. But the ones that I see, you go to the hospital, they give you 60 bucks a day. I mean, I don't, that's not going to put a dent in your hospital bill, in my opinion. My wife and I were in the hospital recently for our third child. We got an aspirin. We were able to see the breakdown. An aspirin cost $48. So if you're paying 30, 40, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks a month for some type of hospital indemnity plan, it might be a good plan. There's a lot of bad plans too. And nowadays with these whole life plans, these these hospital indemnity, some of the some of the benefits are built right into your final expense plan. So generally the folks I'm meeting with, they're on a fixed income. Okay. They don't have you know, abundance of resources. They're not raking in $10,000 a month and they can have term and whole and hospital indemnity and they don't have all these options. So we're looking at usually $1,400 a month of income, $1,800 a month of income, you know, maybe $2,000. Oftentimes it's $1,100, $1,200 of income on the husband, the wife, $800 of income. So $2,000 total when funds are lower like that and you're living throughout your retirement years, you need to allocate your money the best you can. So for example, hey, do you want to pay for this term policy that might pay out? Do you want to pay for this hospital indemnity plan that might pay out? If you go to the hospital, maybe it'll pay out. Like if you, it'll pay 60 bucks a day. That's if you go to the hospital. Or does it make more sense to take these monies, being that you're on a budget, on a fixed income, does it make more sense to take these monies and allocate those towards a whole life plan that is going to pay when you die? Because you are going to die, and this is going to pay. And remember what I said earlier. The only kind of life insurance that matters is the kind that pays when you die. So guys, this has been a breakdown between term and whole. I hope that you found it helpful, whether you're a consumer or an agent. If you're a consumer and you need help with a product, please reach out. You can go to kylestudio.com, scroll to the bottom. You can text me, 740-503-0226. I'm in the Dayton, Ohio area. And if you're an agent just looking to explain these products better or better to understand this, um, hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, so the one more thing I want to mention here, last kind of uh, bit I mentioned this earlier. A lot of agents get confused with like mortgage protection, for example. They think mortgage protection is a product. Mortgage protection is just a term. It's a well, it's not necessarily a term policy or or a whole life. It can be either. And I, when I said term, I meant like a phrase. Mortgage protection is a phrase that's used to illustrate to a client like how they could use insurance. Mortgage protection is a concept. It can It's just life insurance. Mortgage protection is life insurance. Whether it be term, whole life, or even accidental, you can purchase insurance of some sort to cover a mortgage. And we would call that mortgage protection. It's not one product. Uh, whole life, like final expense, burial insurance, um, cremation insurance, it's just a whole life plan generally used to cover these things. So they're not necessarily synonymous with like mortgage protect mortgage protection is not synonymous with term. Mortgage protection is just a concept that we can market to clients to help them understand. Because what's funny is you oftentimes ask clients, hey, do you need life insurance? Oh no. No. I don't need life insurance. Okay, well hey. Would you be interested in maybe some mortgage protection? This pays off your mortgage in the event of a premature death, disability, unemployment, and if you don't die, you can get all your money back. Oh, well, that sounds interesting, right? That I would be interested in looking at. Or that, paying off my mortgage if I die, that makes sense to me. It's life insurance. But mortgage protection kind of allows the client or the consumer to, to understand, oh, the purpose. So as an agent, we don't sell what it is. We don't sell, this is life insurance. This is term life. We don't sell what it is. We sell what it does. So hope this helps, guys. KyleStuter.com. 
Find me on Facebook at Kyle Studer, Instagram at Kyle Studer FE, like final expense. And if you want to know more about my agency, kylestudier.com, scroll to the bottom. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate your support. Comment below, and hopefully we can connect soon. Bye.